Hello and welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. Today I'm going to explain how to automate instruments that you might find in a typical laboratory. So this optical spectrum analyzer here is actually fairly old. It's from uh, 1986, which makes it almost a decade older than I am at the moment. But uh, it actually still works. The only issue is that there's no real way to extract data from it, apart from this printer it has on top here. So this is actually... Oh, that's kind of clumsy of me. Anyway, so this one actually has a printer on top where if you wanted to get data out of the, the machine, you'd have to either print it out on a piece of paper, or alternatively, you'd have to use this type of port right here, which is called a GPIB port. You'll see on the back, there's no USB port. This really wasn't invented back then. So this was the standard that they used to uh, communicate with instruments. And actually, this is still in use in a lot of um, modern, modern devices. For example, this electrical spectrum analyzer that I used in the line width measurement video should also have a GPIB port right here, as you can see, the blue, the blue one. So um, today I'm going to show how to actually connect devices using GPIB ports, so stay tuned. Okay, so in my hand here I'm holding a GPIB cable and you'll see it just has one connector on one end and another connector in the other end. What's really interesting about this type of cable is that it's actually a sort of daisy chain cable. So the idea is that you can uh, plug this into a device and then plug another cable onto it and then connect a whole series of devices that way. So right now we can see two devices I've uh, connected here. So this is a, um, a polarization controller that you can program remotely along with a variable optical attenuator right here. And you can see this cable runs from the uh, polarization controller into the port here. Then I've plugged this blue extra cable into it that has a GPB port on one end and then a USB cable on the other end that I've plugged into my laptop. I'll show you how to set it up in just a moment. But this is basically a specialized cable that you get from National Instruments. Well, you have to buy it, of course. And uh, if you set it up correctly, then you can actually use your uh, use a G uh, USB port in a modern computer in order to communicate with some of these fairly old instruments. So I'll show you how to set that up now. Actually, before we move on to that, I should probably mention that it is possible to uh, get a GPIB card that you can install inside of a, a proper computer if you're a bit more hardware savvy than I am. Um, I'm not entirely confident with the uh, doing that sort of thing, but if you really uh, are kind of skilled, then it's something you can do and you can actually plug the GPB cable directly into your computer without needing the, the blue cable from National Instruments. So anyway, let's move on to seeing how we install that. All right, so let's see how we can actually set up the, uh, the blue connector so we can use our USB ports to connect to instruments using GPIB. So I suggest the first thing you do is to install uh, Anaconda. So this is a Python distribution that allows you to um, use a lot of uh, standard Python libraries like NumPy and SciPy and so on. I found that if you want to send um, instructions to an instrument, typically it's because you want to conduct some kind of experiment or you need to automate certain instrument functions. And then having a, a fairly easy to use programming like, uh, like Python to handle that is, is quite convenient. So once that's done, you should install PyVisa, which uh, you can do by following the following link here. So uh, to install it, you simply um, open the Anaconda prompt, just go to your uh, um, what's it called, the start menu down here, open the Anaconda prompt and then type in this command right here, conda install dash c, conda dash forge, pyvisa. So once that's uh, present, it's possible for um, for Python to sort of understand the, um, or to handle GPIB commands, but you still need the, um, the driver for the actual uh, connector. So in order to get that, we have to um, go to the following website, simply National Instruments website, and then you find this particular driver right here. You can uh, Take a look at the, the link if you want. I'll also put it in the, the description. You simply have to install this and uh, it will take a while, so please be patient. And, but once that's done, it's possible for your, um, your computer to recognize this device here and understand that it can send um, instructions from Python into the device and then onto the, uh, the instruments. So let's actually take a look at how we can um, use programming in order to control some instruments remotely. Okay, before we see the uh, programming in action, let's actually discuss the setup I've constructed here in order to uh, to prove that we can, we can communicate with instruments remotely. So the setup just contains uh, a laser that goes into a variable optical attenuator and into a polarization controller and then into a polarimeter. So the idea is that because the um, optical attenuator and the polarimeter, oh sorry, the polarization controller are both hooked up to each other with GPIB cables and then up to the PC via the, the blue cable we just discussed, it's possible to send commands to, to both of them. And that should allow us to both change the power that goes into the polarimeter over here, which we can measure using the device, as well as the state of polarization of the light going in. All right, so let's actually take a look at how we can do that. Okay, actually just one quick trick before we get into the, the programming. 
it's uh, necessary to actually know what the address of this um, of this device is. So uh, in order to figure that out, we can go to setup and then browse through the different settings here. Let's see, call, save. Yes, yeah, so here it says GPIB address and it's equal to one. And the same thing can be done for this polarization controller here. We simply go to, I think it is local here and it says HPIB or GPIB address is 13. Okay, so let's actually see if we can get the same output over on the, on the laptop. All right, so I've opened, um, opened Spider and created a small Python script here. First of all, I just import the time library. That's so we can uh, later do uh, time delays in our little uh, experiment. And then I've also imported uh, PyVisa as PV. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually see if the GPP addresses that we saw on the instruments can be discovered by, um, by Python, yeah. So let's see if I run this. We can see over here we get GPIB address one, so that'd be the position controller, and then GPIB address 13, which would be the, uh, oh, sorry, this would be the attenuator. Yeah, the first one, that's the attenuator. The second one, that's the uh, polarization controller. So if we take a look at the script I've created, so you can see I've cheated a little bit by pre-writing everything. In order to uh, connect to the attenuator, we have to uh, first give it a name, so it's called an ATT, and then wrote, written um, equal PV resource manager, and then open resource, and then the first entry in this list we have over here, because I know that's the, um, let's say attenuate on. And then same thing for the polarization controller. Now, in order to actually send commands, you have to understand, or you have to know what kind of programming uh, instructions that each device can take. So typically you might have to actually Google the uh, serial number, the sort of device name that you're, you're looking at, and see if you can find the programming manual. So if I go in here, I've actually dug up the manual for this um, variable attenuator. And so if you scroll through this, I think usually you can find a page where it tells you how to send different commands. Yeah, so here we are. So some of these commands here, those are the sort of generic GPIB commands that will just help you identify the, the instrument. And if you scroll a bit further down, you should be able to find some of the more unique commands for this particular device here. So obviously it's an attenuator, so there should be some kind of instruction for setting the attenuation. Yeah, so here we have a bunch of the different commands. There should be some more detailed instructions down here. Yeah, so we have this one here. Essentially the syntax is you, you simply write uh, ATT for attenuation and then a, uh, a sign obviously that has been negative because we're attenuating, so we're decreasing the power and then a value, so this could be 10 or 30 or whatever you might want to set. And of course there can be a lot of other commands that you can use, for, use down here. So anyway, if you go back to the script, you can see that um, I first reset the attenuator to a um, value of negative three decibels. And by the way, this is one of the instances where what's called F strings in Python are super useful. It's simply a way of handling strings in Python that allows you to sort of write um, equations and numbers directly into uh, a string and have the have Python actually calculate it, turn it into a string and then send it to the, the instrument. So we simply write um, it see dot write and then whatever string you want to send the instruments in here. So this should set the attenuation to negative three. And then I've also gone through the manual for the position controller and found that in order to set the positions of the four paddles that adjust the state of polarization, I have to write uh, colon, pedal one, colon, position zero. And apparently this number here ranges from zero to 999. So I can do this for all of them and then set the, um, the polarizations. Then this little for loop I've written here, just in 20 steps, it, um, it simply increments the position of pedal number one. And um, then it waits for 0 0.25 seconds in order to make sure that the device is settled down. Then it increments the attenuation of the, the attenuator by uh, one decibel and then it waits for a while, then it, it repeats that. And then finally, once that loop is completed, it simply resets all of the um, all of the devices right here. So if I run the script, we should be able to see how the, uh, um, how the response looks on the uh, polarimeter. So let's take a look at that. All right, so I'm going to run the script now by pressing F5. We can see it's active and it's not complaining. And now we can see that the attenuator is stepping here. And so is the polarization controller here. And over on the perimeter, we can see the polarization changes. And also in each step, the power here decreases. So definitely this um, remote control experiment that we're doing is clearly, clearly working. And now it's resetting, as you can see, going back to negative three decibels. All right, so I hope that was an informative little uh, video on how you can automate instruments. Obviously, this is a very simple, um, simple experiment with some simple instruments, but you can easily see how you can create more sophisticated setups that involve different instruments that are measuring or changing in, uh, in different steps if you want to conduct a measurement. All right, so that was it for, for now. Stay tuned for more videos. Actually, uh, before I go, I should probably 
clarify that using GPIB isn't the only way they can automate instruments remotely. Most of the modern instruments will probably have a GPIB port, but also an Ethernet port and also a USB port, which can be used to remotely control instruments. And a lot of companies, of course, also sort of deliver the sort of remote control software with the, the device. So it depends a bit on the manufacturer. But um, GPIB ports are like a really sort of old standard, but also present a lot of instruments. So I thought that would be the best one to, to show you guys. But you can experiment with like using a LAN cable or USB if you have different devices in your laboratory. All right, that is it for now. See you later.